This video is brought to you by StarCharge, the largest EV charging manufacturer in the world. They are also a provider of residential and commercial battery storage with microgrid solutions. It really doesn't look this small on its own, but when you park it next to R1, holy smoke. Welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video and welcome to Normal Illinois where I am able to present to you for the first time from me the Rivian R2. You have to forgive some audio throughout this clip because it is fairly windy. Yes, I forgot microphones. Crazy Kyle. And we are in a public event hosted by Rivian, but they've let me stay after hours and actually even come before hours so I can give you a full tour of the new Rivian R2. In this video, of course, I'm going to be taking on a full tour of the exterior, talking about what might make it to series production, what I think might change. We're going to go on the interior, give you a full interior review, as well as play around with some of the HMI scroll wheels and some other really cool stuff uh, in this video. Hopefully we'll come to you, I don't know. We got RJ on camera as well, should be fun. We're in normal, this is the Rivian R2. Let's get into it. guys, here it is, the Rivian R2. This is Rivian's second electric vehicle, and it is sort of a mid-size SUV. I would say almost a direct competitor to Model Y, especially when you look at the price. This is priced at starting at $45,000, they claim. Now, everything in this video is still head of series production and head of start of sale, so things might change over time, but Rivian is at least promising 300 miles of range on all drivetrain variants. That does not mean on all battery pack variants. And of course, uh, $45,000 seems pretty dang good. Let me just take you on a quick tour. Let's take a look. You can see traditional Rivian front end styling. We'll start really looking at things up close as we go. Um, it's got that you know badge with the yellow accents all around, which is cool. This is gonna come in a single motor, dual motor, and tri-motor. Come on down the side. Let's just give everyone a quick run view. You, of course, have the contrasting color line here, very similar to R1S. It's actually almost like an R1S just shrunken down. And I have to put this right up front. I think it's kind of cool. This is the first vehicle to debut. Take a look right here with the North American charging standard for it. That's not a Tesla. I guess Aptera did it, but they're not even on sale. This isn't on sale, but this will have a NAX port natively. Now, you may notice that the charge port is in the non-native location to work and interface with the Tesla charging network. Rivian, I just talked to RJ about it. He said they're open to feedback and they might move the charging port. Let's see what happens. Uh, it could be kind of interesting. Hey, there's, this is still an early design prototype, which we don't typically film on this channel, but we were here, I drove a thousand miles to come see this car. I wanted to get, at least bring you around because a lot of these elements will be close to final. Uh, my friend Brian's gonna take us through, he'll show us how the window works in the back and he'll show us the trunk space in a little bit. Obviously, it's the drop glass. And so now we've got access, not only can we drop the glass, but then if you're outside, You've got your nice little shelf for tailgating. So oh, I can walk yeah. around, I can set my drinks on here. It's kind of like a tailgate without a tailgate. And then underneath here, I can open this up and I've got access to the back. I can fold the second row seats flat. I would have access underneath here to more storage, mm -hmm. uh, some tie downs, onboard power, USB C's, and the 110 outlet. Okay, and can you fold the front seats from here? No, just the rear. Okay, so the rear will go down and then the front seats will be a software setting? So the front seats right now uh, is one of the things we were looking at and exploring, but they don't, uh, they don't fold correctly. In the, in the prototype one, I guess, yeah. Okay, cool. Well, that's super awesome. This is uh, plenty of room. I think, Alyssa, why don't you give us your quick dog impression? Will the dogs fit in here? Yeah. 
Velvet, pretty good. Uh, Tailgate needs to go higher. We've learned that. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. Actually, yeah. one of the things, and again, this is we're two years from production. We built this to show the world what R2 is. Um, but as we start dialing in every little detail around cut lines, we are aligned that this has to open higher, but not so high that you can't reach the button to close it. Right. Totally agree. Room, what's your what's your sizing in there? I mean, the dogs, if you pull it down, the dogs will have no issue. Actually, somebody came up to me and was like, hey, so do you think a vario cage is going to fit in there? And we're actually going to be working with them soon on all this stuff. So once we get this in, in our hands in several years, then we'll, we'll go through all that stuff. But more of that kind of content to come. But definitely, um, I would say kids, kids' car seats will fit so much better in the back here than they do in the R1S. I'll tell you that. Or the R1T, really, because that's the tight squeeze. No. Oh, the R1S is the tight squeeze. With the third row? Video. Yeah, yeah. So this has room. Okay. For the, for the rear facing Are these vents back here for eight air conditioning, perhaps? Yes. Yeah, okay. So there are some vents in the rear, Alyssa. Okay, so those are perfect Walter vents. Yeah, great. So nice HVAC vents, plenty of room in here, I would say. You can see the, the load height, all of these may change as we get closer to production, but you can see the roof is pretty low initially and then ramps up in terms of height. So it might be a squeeze for things to get in, but then you'll have plenty of room up ahead. Again, this one probably representative of a high spec has the Alcantara, or I should say micro suede, whatever the Alcantara is a company, but you know, all looks pretty interesting in here. Loving the materials. Hopefully they all stay pretty close to uh, production. Love the little hidden points right here on either side, tie downs everywhere, uh, four tie downs right there for what you need. And then Probably this is a, a point as to where you'll put in a, a load cover. But yeah, plenty of room back here. I would say no issues at all. The design on the back looks good. You'll notice there's these Rivian badges really are cool because they're like almost 3D effect throughout the whole thing, which absolutely looks awesome. This one's not displaying a tow hitch at the moment, a receiver, but it will have, a, I guess, a towing package. Maybe it'll be standard. My guess is it'll be optional and you should be able to tow, I hope, at least 5,000 pounds with this one. Fingers crossed for 7,500 pounds. That'd be crazy, but yeah. So let's talk specs. I'm not much of a design guy. We don't know much about the specs on this particular vehicle, but there's some things we do know and that we can kind of assume. I hate to make assumptions. I hate to make, you know, sort of speculation on this channel. We always talk about hardcore facts, but the R2 essentially will launch, like I mentioned, 300 miles of range, probably with the big battery. It uses 4690 cells, which means they're 46 millimeters uh, width. And then, wait, how does it go? 90 millimeters tall? Yeah, so pretty juicy cells. And my guess is they're going to have to water jacket cool them because I can't imagine they're going to do top and bottom plate cooling. Could be interesting. I also think they're going to offer multiple battery pack sizes. They do this for R1S and R1T, and I think to get the base price down, they are going to go for probably a smaller battery. The question is, is it going to be a physically different battery or a software locked battery? Time will tell. Could be interesting. On the motor front, we know that Rivian has just introduced their new Enduro drive units. We have a bunch of videos testing those out, and there's even more updates to come from a drivetrain perspective when they do the R1 mid-cycle refresh launching in just a few weeks from now. And what I don't know is what motors this will use. My guess is they're going to be doing some kind of oil-cooled motors rather than the water jacket external cooling like we've seen on the, the original Bosch quad motor system. So I'm expecting good thermal longevity. I'm expecting great performance from the tri-motor version. That sounds like it's going to be really spicy, really hot. And uh, yeah, it should be cool. But I just can't get over the $45,000 price. Truly, even if that comes with 200 miles of range or 250 miles of range. That seems like a really good value. When you factor in that a Model Y long range is high $40,000 right now, and this is after Tesla has cut a lot of pricing, this is gonna be a really good price point. And you'll see in a few clips when we go inside, this is a premium and nice experience to be in there. It's actually amazing. It's hard to be so critical of a vehicle this early on, but all I can do is make suggestions to Rivian as to what I would like to see. And we'll certainly get to that by the end of this video, some changes and things I'd like to see improved. Come on in, let's look at the wheels. This is important. Now this is not the finalized OE wheel and tire, but it's on a Goodyear tire right here. Does it say the size anywhere? 275, 50, 21. I'm noticing a little spacer in the back, maybe a 10 mil just to give it a little bit of stance. I can't imagine it's gonna be shipping with that. Again, this is kind of a hodgepodge of components under here. My understanding is this is sort of a tubular <laughs> situation and it's got some hodgepodge R1 stuff under there, different battery packs, stuff like that. 
uh, and it is a square setup, 275, 50, 21. Really liking this Goodyear tire. I'm not sure what it is. Territory RT, maybe? I'm not totally sure. It's very aggressive and it's got a cool design pattern, but again, they have a prototype division that I'm sure these tires came from. Uh, in terms of the overall length, it's quite a bit shorter than R1S, but actually, maybe not that much shorter. You know, there's I can overlay the images of the exact differences in size difference. But Alyssa, your opinion of this versus R1S, they are almost closer than most people would expect. Yeah, I mean, it's just like the cute little mini me version. It's just like the little, it's the stubby. I would name it stubby. <laughs> <laughs> so the question is, when by the time this goes on sale, R1Ss of the current generation will have depreciated a little bit. Do you go used R1S or new R2? Mm, I, I like more. So probably the used R1S. If anything, I want Rivian to make an extended R1S, an R1S yeah. L built on the R1T's platform because right, yeah. R1S has always felt a little bit small to me. It's an amazing car, handling wise, in terms of powertrain, everything that it can do, but I'd love to see a long wheelbase one. But here we are, R2, significantly less expensive. What do you think they're gonna price it up to? Because again, you're not getting 300 miles of range, tri-motor under three seconds, zero to 60, and $45,000 altogether. You think it'll go up to 75? Probably. Maybe 70? $25,000 in options? Yeah, roughly. Feels about right. Yeah. And I think most people probably will end up in the mid $50,000 range. We ha we don't know how it'll be spec, but that's kind of my guess. You know, in, in terms of some of the competition coming for this vehicle, there's just, this is the hottest segment. This is what everyone wants. Model wise, the best selling vehicle in the world. I, now that of course this will charge on the Tesla Supercharger Network, it has incredible software. Shout out to Wasim and the team over there. They really update the vehicles um, amazingly. I, as a Rivian owner, I'm getting constant updates with huge improvements that are very user centric. How, how would you choose a mo um, Tesla Model Y over this vehicle? I think for me, it comes down to the charging performance. This needs to be fast traveling. So fat charging curve, big peak speeds needs, of course, to handle really well. It's gonna have adaptive dampers. I'll show you that inside. So that'll be kind of cool, maybe as an option. And overall, I think this could have the opportunity to dethrone the king. That's why I wanted to get on this video early because Model Y really is the benchmark in so many cases. And this truly seems like it is the first real competitor. But again, it's so early on, again, it's hard to be critical because we don't know too much about the vehicle. We can just keep our fingers crossed and hope for something cool. Come on over, back over here. You'll notice that there are some roof rail attachments as well. So really cool how you can put some crossbars on there. Big glass roof. Glass roof starts here and ends here, which is really, really nice. And then in the back, you'll notice a little bit of arrow going on. And so the arrow comes down here. But then the question becomes, what do you do in the back from a wiper perspective? Because I'm not seeing a rear windshield wiper anywhere. I see your little chimsel center high mounted brake light here, but I don't know how you would wipe the rear glass other than just rolling the window down and rolling it back up. I might ask the Rivian guys before this video is over and see if they have an answer as to what to do. Because what we know for sure that doesn't work is relying on airflow to clean the glass in the back. No vehicle works when you're on dirt roads and stuff like that. Guys on the back, I wanted to mention on the exterior is actually the rear windows will pop open slightly in the rear so you can get a pretty cool draft of air that comes in this way as well while you're driving so that negative pressure can enter. It should give you a cool breeze is what they're mentioning. And uh, Rivian has confirmed there will be a rear wiper. I don't know how it'll work, but it's gonna have one. Uh, so yeah, don't worry, it'll have a wiper. Uh, new driver assistance suite in this one as well. It's going to have five radars, bunch of cameras. Of course, has a 360 degree view. Uh, if you take a look inside, we're going to go in in a moment. You'll notice new steering wheel interaction points with those haptics. It's got a really nice interior. Feels big, feels nice, and actually a surprisingly large hood. And it's actually a clamshell hood for some pedestrian impact as well. But overall, this is like a legitimately large hood up here. Uh, but even with that, after sitting inside earlier today, it's quite spacious on the inside and the packaging is really nice. You take a look, you have your traditional Rivian style headlights here and gone are actually, actually your turn signals being built into the headlight unit. Your turn signals are now down here. So these will no longer dim when you put your signals on. This is your turn signal. Pretty cool, I think works well. Of course, you have your recovery points right here that should be chassis mounted. I'm not sure, again, on this particular prototype if they are, but I really hope you can rip on these and those make it to final production. 
You have a front camera down here as well. Hopefully that makes it to final production. I think it's such a useful thing when parking, having that. And speaking of parking, I'm not seeing any physical parking sensors on here as well. These are the things that may come with series production or they may choose to go vision only. We'll have to see. Tesla has been talking about licensing some of their FSD tech. Is it too Rivian? I'm not sure. It would kind of make sense. And I think it would do a lot of good for them. So our Rivian R2, that's sort of an exterior quick walk around. I think it looks amazing. The specs right off the bat seem very solid, but it's still early days. There's still a lot that can change. I think, you know, this vehicle is not locked in terms of engineering. There's improvements that can be done. So before we continue with the video, I'd like for you guys to put in the comments, because Rivian's going to be watching this, what improvements, what features, what metrics does this vehicle need to have in order for you to make a buying decision for it? Does it need to be able to drift sideways? Because that's one for me. Rivian should be performance oriented. I should be able to slide it like I do my R1T. It's got to be fun. It's got to be enjoyable. And I need a fat charging curve with big charging performance because I like to road trip. So those are my two big ones. What would you guys like to see? With that said, let's go inside. I want to show you some of the HMI scroll wheels. We're going to show you the trunk, of course, and then I'm going to give you a full interior review and then we'll wrap up the video. Well, guys, I'm here with RJ. We're in front of R2. Dude, thanks so much for putting the event on. Yeah, happy to be here. I'm happy you're able to see this in person. So obviously at out of spec, we like all the nerd stuff. It's still early days for R2 yep. specs, but what generally do you think our audience can expect in terms of charging performance, yeah. range, all yeah. the stuff? What are the targets roughly? So over 300 miles of range, really quick acceleration, zero to 60 in under three seconds. Um, fast charging, so you're gonna, I'm sure, study it and show us all the charging curves, and, but we spend a lot of time looking at charging at different temperatures, different conditions. Great. Um, but I think importantly, dynamically, the vehicle's able to capture a lot of what makes R1 so special in a smaller package and, of course, a much lower price. So we're, um, we're so excited to get this to the market. And as you walk around, you can see we put a ton of thought into the packaging. If you look at the rear seat packaging, it's incredible. It's, it's um, you know, I'm six foot one ish, and like, the in front of my knee is. I mean, it's, it's an awesome package for such a small car. Yeah, Alyssa gave us the backseat review and like just as much room as R1S, it feels like. Yeah, and yeah. maybe even more. And so yeah, I don't know, it's but car, it's awesome. pretty amazing. Yeah. And of course, dynamically, you always build vehicles that rip. We just had our R1T on track doing comparison, drifting yeah. it around. It's I awesome. Yeah, so it's this one, the tri motor is going to be pretty epic. Hell yeah. Can't yeah. wait. Thanks so much for being on the channel yeah, and thanks sure. for uh, having us out here. Yeah. Well, guys, you join me inside the R2 really for the first time. And before we go through the cabin layout and everything, I just want to play around with the new interaction points, which are sort of this haptic scroll wheel situation. It's totally unlike any other interaction with a vehicle that I've ever seen. So Rivian's created a demo mode that will allow me to kind of get a sense of how this is going to feel and work. So you can play around with the HMI just from the steering wheel. So I'm going to hit the play button right here. I can see that we have put your hands on the wheel. Okay, we're there. Oh, the wheels, these two. So, whoa, every time that a letter comes up, it's like uh, force feedback into here. So now it's going to, aha, uh -huh. as I rotate this forward, it's unlocking new words. Very cool. Very cool. So now I'm going to select the right scroll wheel to hit start on controls 101. Really awesome haptic. Uh, that is extremely strong and uh, really forceful. Unlike a lot of systems that you have to put a lot of force into it, this is just the perfect amount. So I'm gonna roll up here. Oh, interesting. Can even change the amount of roll, detent to detent. So this had a really close, uh, basically, number of notches, and this is a longer throw. So now I can tilt it also left and right. So obviously we've, we've played around so far with up and down. We've pushed, and now I can tilt it to the left. Whoa, really cool. You can actually watch it almost vibrate as it goes in there, as it makes that haptic feedback. I'm gonna push in and push out. How cool is that? It rotates even to the back of the wheel, so I can put my hands behind and almost pull towards me. This is really cool. We have dynamic haptics, details you can feel, okay? It says, keep the world adventurous forever. Amazing. This is so cool. So this is a 4D tent next on this side yeah so this is where the detents get really high number of granularity versus low granularity so in the same wheel movement I had four options before and now there are up to 15 in that same rotation which is really cool 
um, you know, I, I actually think this is amazing. People are going to copy this. Rivian's definitely setting the standard. This is the, the one thing I have to say is it's not repeatable. Things change based off of props. So you probably aren't going to use this without looking at the screens, but at least you can glance down and move everything around. Really cool. The amount of haptic force that's in here as well. Really nice. Wow. Really cool. Just really high frequency hits from haptic. Love this. This is amazing. And I'm not like our software guy. That's Jordan's department. This isn't my thing. I just want to drift it, but this is amazing. And there we go. The haptic user interface here screens a good distance away. This fits perfectly within the steering wheel. So it's a little bit wider and narrower, which I like. And these feel awesome. In their standby state, they actually have quite a bit of force and you can see they return to the center position every time. So man, props to Rivian on these scroll wheels. This is cool. I can't wait to see what the final series production version feels like. But if it's anything like this, two thumbs up from me. Well guys, you join me inside the Rivian R2. And first of all, just wanna give you a real impression of how this cabin feels and how airy it is. If you look up, Alyssa, there is a massive glass roof that goes all the way back. It's absolutely crazy. So um, interestingly, there are no speakers in the doors. There are speakers up here and there are speakers right next to the accelerator pedal all the way down in the footwell, but that leaves a bunch of room in the door cards. If you take a look here, Alyssa, as to just how much room you can put a bottle in to those. Even the rear seat has quite a bit of room. Front's definitely bigger. And inside, it's very typical Rivian. Uh, what's crazy to me is that the design, the material usage, the view out the front, how similar this is to R1S. And in some cases, I would say even nicer. I like the use of the fabrics here. I like this sort of speaker line that goes across the top because again it's all center mounted speakers for the majority of your sound system with a few stuffed in other places very similar to like volvo ex30 with the sound bar up there and then you still get this very i always call it like a range rover like hood or very you know in this case now rivian like hood with this flat surface going out in front of you that just gives you this commanding view of the road and, and sitting here it almost feels like i'm in an r1s just in low suspension it sits and I wouldn't even say that low. The seat position at least goes pretty low in this particular one as well. It's very cool inside. Loving the displays. There's a few things that I can show you in here as well. First of all, I think if I push and hold or double tap here, we get sort of this internal um, sort of menu, which is cool. So you get demos. This I don't think they really want anyone to see this, but you get a bunch of different drive modes and things like this. You can open and close the windows. But of course, in here you get you know, your traction for each individual tire. It gives you your motor temperature and battery temperature, which is pretty amazing. You have drive modes as well, towing, which we're not sure of the towing capacity on this, but all purpose, all terrain snow, has adaptive damper with ride and soft and firm. And all of these will change, of course, as we get closer to production. And I also love that they give you legitimately a stability control toggle. How many cars are we always fighting stability control on in our testing? Rivian has this sort of fun and uncharacteristically sporty uh, element to it for most SUVs and pickup trucks. It's pretty incredible. So I love the fact that you have all the drive modes here, efficiency, tire pressures, and again, the Wasim and the team at, that's doing software, they are pretty much second to none in the car business right now in terms of providing useful OTAs to owners. This vehicle is going to be heavily supported if we have anything like R1 to go off of. So this will change but I'm loving the, even the base point here. If I come to the stuff we're interested in in the UI, you can see we're at 70% state of charge right now. It tells you how much the charging session costs. It tells you how many kilowatt hours you added, and you'll notice a charging curve. We love that. Now, is this the final representation of the charge curve? Probably not. This is using that new cell architecture. We're not sure how they will charge. It is NMC chemistry, but it's in a different format, which I'm not sure how that's gonna work from cooling. And so I really hope they focus on fast traveling with this vehicle with fast charging, but I love that they give you a curve. And if they're this transparent about the charging details, well then, you know, charging at least is top of mind, which is really important. I love that you can set a charge limit. Looks like it has a 48 amp onboard charger, very similar to the other vehicles. So all is looking pretty consistent there as well. There's also some camping functions. Um, there's outlets in the vehicle, which is great. I can double tap this super dark mode, I think, if I come over here. Oh wait, maybe I have to push and hold. There we go. 
and now everything goes like dark red. Maybe it's just a demo thing and you hold it down. But essentially this is uh, if, for car camping because all the seats, of course, fold completely down. You can go super dark. Love the software, the UI, all of this is cool. But again, I don't wanna to spend too much time on a lot of this stuff. Of course, it's gonna do route planning. It's gonna show you all the charging stations and everything like that. I don't wanna to go too hardcore in this only because well, it's going to change from now to series production. So let's focus on the hard points. We have two glove boxes in this vehicle, which I know can open and I will show you, but I don't actually want to break their prototype. So we'll ask one of the guys to show us. Um, they told me how to do it, but honestly, I don't really remember. Maybe, oh yeah, you just push on it. It's like a little mechanism to latch. Here we go. Look at that. Two glove boxes, really nice latching points in there as well. So you have this sort of gold trim, very similar to the accents in our R1T. This one on the right side is obviously larger than the left side, but just super, super cool for a lot of owners. When Rivian presented the glove boxes to everyone at the unveil, this was like the best day for so many people. I was like, why, why are, are glove boxes so important? But they are. Uh, and uh, to a lot of owners and famously the R1 S and T do not have the glove boxes. So here we got glove boxes. I wonder if they'll keep with a wireless charging pad right here on the center console. Alyssa, we know that just doesn't work in our R1T or R1S. And you have to like get the phone perfectly lined up and then you go around a corner and it stops charging. Right, yeah, it, it doesn't work too well. I mean, but it is a good space to put your phone. <laughs> if you look in here, you'll see this is the key for the prototype. Hilarious. And, uh, you know, just an open storage bin. They have some cables and stuff down there. Nothing too major. But then you have your pop-up cup holders which is amazing. And then there's even a pop-out tray that if you can come, I can actually show the viewers up here, if you don't mind. There's a pop-out tray viewers that, look at how far this thing goes. Absolutely crazy how much room is in this tray. Now, of course, that means this area has to be clear, which let's be honest, will never be clear. So I don't actually think you'll be using this too often. I noticed that with my camp speaker sometimes, I'm trying to pull it out of my R1T, but I got so much crap down here that it never totally works. Um, the view from the driver's seat, of course, there's a lot of people at this event, but it's a really nice view out the front. Just This is right at eye level, exactly what you guys will be seeing. Scroll wheels always just in view, really nice tactile, um, again, fa uh, impacts here, hits from the haptic system on the scroll wheels, love those. Nice center screen here. Of course, you have your turn signals and your windshield wipers, as well as your driver assistance controls and gear selector. My suggestion to the Rivian team was to take this little toggle of distance control off of this scroll wheel and maybe integrate it with the haptics. I think this could get a little bit confusing having to reach in and do the toggle. I know that because of course the headlights are controlled like this on R1T and R1S, same with the wipers. And a lot of people actually get confused with this internal toggle. It's hard for the, a lot of them to understand that. Over here, we have our door release, lock and unlock, window switches, all feeling really nice and honestly pretty high quality. So liking that. Side view mirrors are small, but also should help the vehicle a little bit more narrow. Alyssa, why don't you give us the back seat review? Before you do that, you have heated seats, lock and unlock for the vehicle weirdly and usb-c ports back there what did I say? <laughs> yeah what's your opinion on the back um it's nice but it's very firm very well stiff. these are not the final seats this is a very early prototype more on space and you know how it feels do you have headroom leg room yeah overall space is great i mean there's definitely a lot more room here i am my legs are for a six foot person. So this is a very, very good room. And um, yeah, headroom is great. I'm excited to know that the seats fold down and everything's flat for the dogs. Um, I'm already seeing no rear vents. So oh, uh, interesting. Actually... Well, we have the vents right here in the center, but no um, B pillar vents no, no. and no roof vents. If you're a dog happy, friendly company, there needs to be pillar vents or vents up here. Just something that's able to go down on them. Because if you have a Newfoundland <laughs> and a, a blue, they're fighting for these two vents to stay cool. Um, but good suggestion. That's There's still a couple years until this reaches production. Maybe enough for them to add some vents for the dog owners. Right, yeah. And if they have any type, I don't know if they have plugs back there. Yeah, we'll look in the back. We'll do yeah. a tour back there. But if that's the case, then I'll just always plug in a fan for, for all the dogs. But definitely having 
side pillar vents is just a must in uh, SUVs. I mean, for kids as well, everybody's fighting over Yeah, why don't you air. show everyone the view from the back seat, see what everyone can, you know, show what everyone can see, the views out the front. Are there USB ports in the seats? Yep. So wow, it's just cool. like, uh, and it's got the little hooks that I want. To, does anybody use these? Does anybody <laughs> yeah, use these? I need good, to know. I don't think many people use them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it looks good. There's uh, lights right in here. Oh, nice. And um, not there's no way to turn them on as of right now. But um, overall, it feels really good. It feels like they're doing a lot. Well, this is interesting. This so side. this is how you open up the doors. Yeah, exactly. Um, you got a full handle here, so yeah. I mean, I I like it. It's it's good. Yeah, I totally agree. I think um, you know, from my perspective, it doesn't feel much smaller in here than an R1S. And in fact, this it almost feels airier. A lot of that's because this is non-production glass and it's not tinted at all. Yeah, this uh, is so fishbowl <laughs> and everything. <laughs> it's fishbowl, and we have a lot of people staring at us. But overall, you can see here you have your mirror that drops down really nice lighting, large rear view mirror as well, hazards, SOS, and your microphone all is the same as the other trucks. And just the inside feels almost no different. The biggest takeaway to me, uh, other than like, like what are owners gonna feel from R1S to R2? Like a lot of people who own current Rivians will get R2. I don't think you're gonna feel like this is a down market vehicle and it's significantly less expensive. Like, uh, you know, starting again at 45,000, the one we're sitting in, who knows what it'll go up to. This is representative of a top spec, I would imagine probably right. 70 grand. I don't know, I'm just making up numbers, but you know, the dash is a little bit lower, but you still get this great view print, view uh, out the front. It all feels really nice inside. Let's explore the outside, do a little bit more touring around because I feel like everyone's staring at us in here. Well, we're pretty used to it now with the Cybertruck. Yeah, it feels so. like we're in the Cybertruck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> pretty crazy. So yeah, let's uh, let's look in the trunk and then we'll wrap up the interior portion of R2. But my impressions are the seats are great. Again, these are not the final seat structure, but the seat design looks really nice. The software, the screens look nice. It's a little bit narrower, a little bit wider than Rivian. Same here than, than R1, I should say. I'm loving the scroll wheels. I'm loving the space. There just seems to be like, where did they put HVAC? Where did they put everything else? Because there's just so much room in here. It's very sleek. It's very Scandinavian to me. That's the vibe I get in here that I'm like going into the Nordics. With well, guys, on the size comments, I have R2 and R1 right here. And actually, when you park them next to each other, wow, R1 appears so much larger. R2 is actually even a little bit shorter than Model Y. Oh, sorry. Yeah, right here. So this is just a tiny bit shorter than Model Y, but you can see it doesn't slope down in the back, which is, of course, pretty nice. And, uh, you know, tomorrow's video should be really fun. RJ just hooked me up with that uh, service van over there. So I'm going to take an EDV out. So stay tuned for a future episode. But when you put them like this, this is where you can really see the size difference. R2, wow. It really doesn't look this small on its own. But when you park it next to R1, holy smokes, it's so much smaller, actually. You would never expect that just seeing this as a single vehicle on its own. When I come over here, this seems almost like a large midsize SUV. And then, wow, you put it next to this thing and it is totally different. So there's a little size comparison for you guys. And uh, yeah, wow, I'm really glad that we were able to do this because this puts into perspective truly how midsize R2 is. And it brings up that conversation used R1S, which is significantly larger, probably harder to park, maybe not even as good as handling as this will be, just a speculation, uh, or do you go new R2? I don't know. This is, these are good problems to have in life. Let's just put it that way. And wow, big size difference. Of course, guys, it wouldn't be a video if I didn't get R3 and R3X in there for you as well. So just had to get a couple shots. Here comes the R2 right next to the R3. You can actually really get a nice almost size comparison there. R3 looks bigger than you would expect uh, in this particular case. So yeah, I, I think the regular R3 looks pretty cool. R3X, of course, this is the rally car dreams for daily driving. We all want that, of course. But uh, here's a little sneak preview and the inside of R3 looking cool. Similar scroll wheels. You can see the pedals down here. Nice carpets as well. Yeah, looking nice glass roof. Man, this thing is gonna be so cool. I'm gonna hold off on doing a video specifically on R3 and R3X until we get closer to series production, but they're just neat. Rear wiper on this one, of course, everyone's gonna love that. That's really needed for where these things are meant to go. And this shares a very similar platform to R2. 
Uh, it's a little bit shorter wheelbase, of course, but just think more hatchback vibes. But honestly, not that small. Very interesting charge port door over here on this side. And then this just being the absolute dream right here. The R3X rally car. You can see inside looking very cool. And uh, yeah, that thing is just the jam. And here they are right next to each other. So cool to see them. Well guys, that is the Rivian R2. I can't thank Rivian enough for letting us come before and after the event to get this video for you guys. Again, Jordan was at the Laguna Beach unveil and so he has some initial content on this, but I really feel like I got to soak in the vehicle. We tried the back seat, plenty of room. It looks incredible. It's got that Rivian high quality adventurous vibe to it as well. 45 grand, if they can stick to that, this could be a winner. We'll have to drive it though. We have to charge it. We need to experience it but it's all shaping up to be potentially one hell of a vehicle for the company and for its future owners. And yes, I do have a reservation for one. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on another one again soon. Bye-bye.